guys, Chauncey Phillips here on my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shop video today. Thinking to go out today, see if things came out, two things are on sale. Today though, some of the big releases that come out is the Lego Movie 2, and I know there's a number of different retail exclusive editions of that one, like at uh, Best Buy they have an exclusive steelbook of that one, and then I believe uh, Target and Walmart, they have editions that have like, uh, you know, exclusive Lego figures in them, and I think it's different Lego figures with each exclusive store, like Target has two different ones and Walmart has two different ones, I believe. Other than that though, the movie The Prodigy comes out. It's a really cool horror film as well as the movie uh, What Men Want. Also though, since the first Tuesday of the month, uh, Walmart gets, you know, changes out the actual section and gets in a whole bunch of new stuff. So definitely looking forward to seeing, you know, what new stuff they got in there today. Also though, the end of this video is going to be a whole bunch of brand new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some th things I received to review and talk about for you guys. Some really cool stuff, some new stuff from Arrow Video, a new uh, Scream Factory title as well as a whole ton of other things as well. And as always too, let me know in the comments below though what you guys thought of the new DVDs and Blu-rays that I reviewed at the end of this video, you know, what you guys thought of them, and also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And over here though, in the front though, they actually have the new things out. So we'll check the section as well, because there should be a couple other things. But like I was saying though, their exclusive here is actually a lenticular cover here on this one, and it kind of changes between the characters. And it also includes, like I was mentioning, these little mini uh, Lego figurines in here. So that's really cool. It should be two different Lego figures, I believe, in the one that's in Walmart. This one here is a $27.99 for the exclusive one, and then it's a $24.99 for the standard Blu-ray, and then it's $17.99 for the DVD of that one. Also, though, uh, What Men uh, Want, that one released today as well. That one's $22.99 for the Blu-ray. But now we'll head over to the section, though, to see what other stuff they have. And they also have a standee over here for the Lego movie. But they're not like mini Lego figurines, though. That's just like the size they are, the size Legos are. So they're not really mini or anything like that. But yeah, it includes, like, like I said, the Rex mini. Um, well, it says mini figure, so I guess that's why I was saying it. But that's like the size Legos are. They also have, though, these Lego dolls here as well as some other Lego toys as well. But over here though, in the kids section right here, they have a bunch of, it seems like they got a lot of copies of this, um, you know, their exclusive one. They do have a 4K of it as well. That one's $29.99. Also though, I believe this one released today, the um, Troll season one through four, which is 26 episodes. I think this might, yeah, I believe this is a Netflix show here. That one's $14.99 for that one. And this one here, this um, you, you, uh, un Unique Kitty, this one released the complete first season, but also though, over here though, like I was mentioning though, this is one that released today, The Prodigy. I'm going to have a review of this one at the end. I'm also going to be talking about the Lego Movie 2 at the end as well, but this is one I really like this movie a lot. I thought this was a really, really cool, pretty like original movie, some really different uh, kind of original stuff going on in this one, but definitely one I would recommend you guys check out. That's $19.99 for the Blu-ray and then $14.99 for the DVD of that one. And over here though, let's see if there's anything else new TV wise. I'm not seeing anything different over here TV wise. I think these are pretty much the main things in here today though. Into Walmart we go. Now I gotta cross my fingers and hopefully this Walmart changed out the actual section because last time on the first Tuesday of the month, you know, they like I said, they always change out the actual movies and last time I had to go to three locations to find everything out. So let's hope they're out. Well, I already peeked over the section and they didn't change anything new out. You know, the stuff I'll show you in a second, but they do have, like I was mentioning, they have an exclusive one here for the Lego movie. That's $24.96. That one though doesn't have the lenticular cover, but it has uh, two different uh, um, figurines in that one. Also though, their DVD edition here has a different cover on that one. That one's $16.96 uh, for that. Then it's $24.96 for the standard edition. So it's the same price, it seems, for both uh, exclusive and the regular Blu-ray. And then uh, What Men Want, that one here is a $19.96 here. Other than that, though, there are some empty spots here. I think this is stuff from last week. And they have uh, Trolls here as well for $15.96. And then... Um, Forrest Gump, this came out today. This is the new edition of that one. That one is on uh, $9.96, and I believe there is a, uh, at uh, Best Buy, they have an exclusive edition of that one, like a Steelbook one. But some 4Ks came out today, like a uh, Black Hawk Down, that one released, and that one's on uh, $19.96 for that one. Yeah, but like over here, though, in the actual section, this is all the stuff that was out last month that they changed. So we're definitely going to head to another one now, and hopefully they change their section out. Into the second Walmart we go. Yeah, this one usually has this stuff out, so fingers crossed, let's hope they change out the section because the other one didn't change out anything at all. It was all the old stuff. 
Yeah, but this one, luckily enough, changed out the actual section, so it has in a bunch of new things in here. So some of the things, though, I think might have been, you know, from last month, but there's a number of ones in here that I know are new. Um, I, I don't remember seeing this one last month here, this, like, Nail 32. Um, let's see any other ones. Uh, this uh, double feature here, when the... Uh, when Calls the Heart, I believe that one was today, as well as Dead Man Rising. Let's see. Uh, see, I think these ones here, I believe, were last month. I don't remember this one, uh, For All the Money. I don't remember that one. I know this one for sure is new. This one, um, Bundy and the Green River Killer. This one came out today. I don't know much about that one. Also, uh, Greyhound Attack. Uh, I think this might have been, uh, like, last month. Uh, Buffalo Boys here. This is another one of the new ones. This one here, uh, the Frontier here, as well as uh, I know this one was this week. This um, Viking Blood. This one released. Let's see any horror ones that came out today. Here's one of the ones that was today that was new. This one here, the um, Music Box. This one here, really say that one's uh, $9.99. Most of these ones here are $9.99 for the most part. Also, though. Let's see here. I think these ones were old. They still have Tooth Fairy, which is cool. They still have this one stocked. This is the one that I have the scene in here when I'm like explaining the origin of the Tooth Fairy. So that's really cool. They still have this one for sale. As well as this one released here, uh, Amityville uh, Mountain Mis Misery Road. This one released here, and that one's $9.99 as well. Also, though, this one I believe is an, a Walmart exclusive. This one here called uh, Death Day. This one that definitely looks interesting. I should have a review of this one uh, coming soon. This one is on uh, $9.96 as well. Also, over here, though, I don't think there's anything new here that I'm seeing, like TV-wise or anything. This released last week, uh, Andre the Giant, the documentary on Andre the Giant. Let me see if I see anything TV-wise over here. Not seeing anything in the front though i did see um see any new steelbooks here it doesn't look like any new steelbooks but in the front though i saw what was the other thing that i saw which looked kind of interesting this one down here called um for 12.96 called uh the headhunter which looks like some kind of a predator type movie that's what it kind of looks like, and I think I think it's like a Viking movie, but it kind of looks like a predator, though, in like a Viking form. This is one other thing that I saw today, which is a cool set here. This is um, the Adventure Time, the complete collection here. That one's $89.96, but it's in this real cool box. I think that one might have been today. I'm not 100% sure, but that's definitely a really cool set here. They also have this one here, this Unique, key, un unique Kitty one as well that I was showing in Target as well. And this past weekend, I saw a couple different films. So the first one I saw was the film The Intruder, which stars Dennis Quaid. It's from the director, Dion Taylor, who I always like his movies. The last movie that he did was the film Traffic. And then he also directed the movie Meet the Blacks, which is a really funny uh, parody film, which is a parody of the movie The Purge. But this one was basically about this couple that ends up moving into this new house that they ended up buying from Dennis Quaid's character. And, like, he's, like, real reluctant to sell the house. And he's not really sure about it. And, like, um... He basically, though, is, like, obsessed with his house. I, as soon as he, you know, he moves out and they move in, he, like, is coming back around. He's, like, cutting their grass. He's, like, doing all this stuff. He's, like, kind of, like, peering in the woods, looking into the house, all sorts of weird stuff. And it just kind of gets worse and worse and worse with his, like, obsession and what he's doing. And, like, like I said, it just builds up to, like, all kind of craziness. Dennis Quaid did a great job, though, playing this total crazy nutcase character in the movie. I actually liked it. I thought this was, like, it was a crazy movie. The other one I saw was the film Long Shot, which stars uh, Charlie Theron and Seth, Seth Rogen. It was basically, though, about uh, Seth Rogen who ends up meeting uh, Charlie Theron again, and she's, you know, the secretary of the state, and he ends up meeting her at this party. But, like, he's had a crush on her for years since they were both, like, you know, teenagers. Like, she used to babysit him because she was, like, a couple years older, older than him, and, like, he always had a crush on her, and she ends up seeing him at this party, and it's kind of like um, she's working on the early stages of running for president, and she ends up kind of hiring him to be one of the writers because he, like, writes comedy and things like that and writes articles in, the, in this, these um, newspapers and stuff like that. So she ends up hiring him and it's kind of about like their relationship and kind of what they're going through and how like the people on the campaign trail and everything are looking at Seth Rogen like why do you have him his character like why are you having him around he's the total pole opposite of you and he, he doesn't make you look too good having him around because like the way he acts and everything I that's another one that I thought was actually a really fun movie it's one of the ones though the trailer kind of gave away a large number of like the, the jokes and stuff like that but still I thought you know both of them did a really good job and was still 
worth uh, checking out, though. Let me know, though, in the comments below, though, what you guys thought of if you guys got to see either of those films or what films you saw this past weekend. Into Best Buy we go. In Best Buy, though, they actually have an exclusive steelbook for the 4K release of Black Hawk Down. That one's uh, $24.99 for that one, and it's $19.99 for the standard uh, 4K of that. Let's look on the other side, though. Like I said, I believe there's a Forrest Gump one today, and they do still have some of these steelbooks for the Lego Movie Part 2. So that's a cool one here. That one's $29.99 for that edition. I don't know if there's a steelbook, a 4K steelbook of that one. That's $24.99 for the standard Blu-ray, uh, $17.96. There's $17.99 for the uh, DVD. And like I said, Prodigy, that was the other one today. And I really like this one. That one's $19.99 here. Other than that, though, we'll check the section, though, too, to see if they have the steelbook for the Forrest Gump one over there. And they do have What Men Won here as well for $19.99. Oh, yeah, and right here I see Forrest Gump. There's a bunch of different versions of that. One. They have the 4K one here, and that one's $21.99 for that one, as well as the um, the Steelbook one. It's actually, I guess it's not a 4K Steelbook. That one's uh, $12.99 for that, and then the standard uh, DVD one, that one's $9.99. Other than that, though, over here, they have what, like I said, they had this in the front as well, What Men Want. And the 4K of uh, Hellboy 2 came out. I don't think the first movie's on 4K yet. That one's uh, $18.99. And I, I think this may have been today. I don't know. This may have been a couple weeks ago. Better Call Saul, the complete fourth season. Other than that, though, that seems to be all the major new things I'm seeing over here. Oh, no. Here's one other one today. Uh, Backdraft. This one came out today as well on 4K. And that one's uh, $18.99 for that. So anyway though guys, that's all for my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy my shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also though, let me know in the comments below, you know, what you guys picked up. If you guys picked up anything today on Blu-ray, DVD, or 4K, you know, which ones you guys ended up getting. Also, let me know as well what you guys thought of all the DVDs and Blu-rays I reviewed in the video, if you guys have seen any of them. Also, if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway though guys, now stay tuned for the brand new reviews. And the first ones I got here are from Arrow Video. Just want you guys to know that these ones are available. This one here is uh, She Devils on Wheels. This is from director Hersher Gordon Lewis. Hersher Gordon Lewis was always known as the godfather of gore. He was one of the very first, and pretty much the actual very first filmmaker who was making films that were really featuring uh, gore effects and like super over the top gory effects. Before that was like the mainstream and used in other movies, he was using those in his movies and really like built a huge following. And that was really what he was known for is these insane gore movies, which were really fun movies. This film here was a very different movie for him. This is a um, motorcycle gang film, which is, uh, you know, it's basically all about this all-female motorcycle gang, biker gang, who's going and causing all this havoc and problems in this town. They also have a rivalry going on with this all-male uh, uh, motorcycle gang, but a really, really fun movie here. This also features a bonus film, which is a 1968 film as well, called uh, Just for the Hell of It. Also has on here, though, uh, introductions to both films by Herschel Gordon Lewis. Has a commentary track on here. Also has on here uh, the, uh, the head of Grindhouse Releasing talking about his discovery of the films of Herschel Gordon Lewis. It has uh, gore punk, uh, garage punk gore, which is filmmaker and musician Chris Alexander discussing his, uh, the films and music of Herschel Gordon Lewis. It has Herschel Gordon Lewis talking about his 1968 film, The Alley Tramp, as well as a Herschel Gordon Lewis promo gallery on this one. But a really fun movie here. Like I said, one of you guys know that this one was available. The next one here, one of the guys know was available as well from Arrow Video. It's a movie here called uh, Yukaza Law. And this one, I believe I'm saying that one right, this one here has, though, a, um, a new audio commentary on here with author and critic um, uh, Jasper Sharp, as well as a um, brand new, you know, it's a new archival interview that was newly edited together, which is an interview with the director of the film here, as well as an image gallery. It also has a uh, reversible artwork as well with this one, reversible uh, cover artwork. There's also a book in here which has, you know, some pictures from the film and, uh, and as well in this one. Like I said, one of the guys know that this was available as well. This is a super gory movie though, but a really, you know, fun movie. Like I said, one of the guys know that this was available. And the last one from Arrow Video, this is from the Arrow Academy line. This is a noir film called The Big Clock. This one here, though, is basically about this boss who ended up killing this, you know, this woman that he was, you know, seeing. And it's basically because she was, like, seeing the one person that works with him. And he's essentially trying to frame the person that works, you know, his employee at the company that he works for, trying to frame him. And it becomes a whole big thing. But if you guys are fans of noir films, like I said, one of the guys know that this was uh, available. This one has on here, though, a new commentary track on here with film so scholar um, Adrian Martin, as well as Turning Back the Clock, a newly filmed analysis on the film by a critic and chief, uh, 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 chief executive of Film of London, Adrian Walton, uh, as well as a uh, difficult actor, newly filmed appreciation 
appreciation of Charles Lawton and his performance in The Big Clock by uh, the actor, writer, and theater director Simon Cowell, as was a rare hour-long uh, 1948 radio drama dramatization of the radio uh, you know, of The Big Clock as well on here, which is by the Lux Radio Theater, as well as a gallery of stills and production materials in this one. This one also has a booklet as well, which has, you know, some stuff about the movie, stills, and all that kind of stuff. But like I said, if you guys are fans of noir films, wanted to let you guys know that this one was available as well. Now, the next one here yeah. is from Shout Factory, Scream Factory line. It's a movie here called The Seduction, which stars Morgan Fairchild. This movie's from 1982. I believe this was the first feature film that she starred in. Uh, before that, she did a bunch of TV work and some soap operas and stuff like that. The one thing, though, when I think of uh, Morgan Fairchild, the first thing I always think of was her part in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. I like because she played the you know movie version of Dottie, and I always loved that sequence in the movie. But that's the one thing I always think of her from first. But this movie though is a super super underrated film. And I saw this one a couple years back when I found the DVD of this one. You know, it was one of those things that was out of print for a long time. So, so glad, though, this one now has a Blu-ray release. And it's such a great, you know, thriller film. Essentially, though, it's about Morgan Fairchild's character, who is a uh, L.A. newswoman who's really popular. So, in a very popular news sh you know, L.A. news show, she has, like, a really nice house. She's, like, but essentially, though, it's about this one guy who's become totally obsessed with her. And he tries to meet her. And she doesn't want anything to do with him. And, like, it basically becomes, like, him coming around and stalking her and bothering her and like you know everything that can kind of go stalkerish that could happen he's doing but she ends up in these situations where like there's not a lot anybody can do and like um she's telling people about it and then like things are getting messed up it, it, all, everywhere around her like i said things are that can get messed up get messed up but she kind of has to sort of Put think, take things into her own hands and figure out what she's going to do and how she's going to get him to finally get a hint and go away. But things just get worse and worse and worse as the movie goes along. Like I said, this is just such a great movie. This has on here, though, uh, new interviews on here with Morgan Fairchild and uh, Andrew Stevens, as well as the producer uh, on this one. Uh, Morgan Fairchild, though, is talking about like some of her first move, you know, work and like her soap operas and how she got into acting and all that stuff. So it's a really, really good interview on here. It also has on here a bunch of different featurettes on here, uh, remembering seduction featurette it has on here a commentary track on here with uh, the producers as well as um, the writer and director on this one as well as it also has on here a still gallery and a theatrical trailer this is one I would highly recommend you guys check out really really like this one a lot the next one here is from Lionsgate. This is one I would give a top recommendation to. I was so impressed with this movie. I absolutely love this movie. Kind of had the vibe to the movie Brimstone a little bit. Another, another movie I would highly recommend you guys check out. It also has like the feel, like not what's happening in it, but like a similar kind of feel to like the time period, kind of, uh, and like the grittiness and everything of, of it to like the movie Ravenous. It's like th that kind of vibe, but it's a movie here called Never Grow Old. But when it comes to like Western films though, I, I, I'm kind of like one way or the other. I either really, really love them or really don't get into them at all. But this one, I got into this one so much and it was just such an interesting story. It was so well done. I thought it was, I, I would say it's probably, you know, it stars Emile Hirsch and uh, John Cusack. I'd say this is probably my favorite John Cusack film that I've seen him do in years. He did like an amazing job in this movie and he plays like such a great bad guy. It's essentially though about Emile Hirsch's character who like, um, is the undertaker of this small town. It's like him and his wife and his kids. They're living there, but they're, because in the town though, the preacher pretty much kind of took over the town and he like said, oh, uh, there should be no drinking. There should be no, um, you know, uh, prostitution. There should be no bars. Like, close, he basically, he kind of ran the town, closed down all the bars. There was no more prostitution allowed in the town. So no one was kind of coming to the town because of that. And like, they kind of got away with, you know, all these things. So like, basically though, there was like no fighting really any, any Anywhere. No one really was dying in the town much. So he really wasn't getting any work. Emil Hirsch's character. He, and he was kind of like worried, like, why why am I here? How, why, you know, we came here to try and make money and there's no, no business here. But then um, John Cusack's character comes in the town with his group of him and these bad guys. They come to town and they kind of rile things up and take over the town and they end up... Um, you know, basically opening up the bar again and kind of running the town. And it's, you know, cuts like really early on in the, mo in the movie to, you know, a couple months later when everything is kind of gone 
to, to pot and you know really gone bad because you know John Cusack's you know character is taken over, and um, you know they Emil Hirsch though kind of doesn't know what to do because he's kind of become sort of talk he's like talking to John Cusack's character and kind of helps him with certain things and is introducing the people in the town, but he's also because he's in town with these bad guys people are dying and he's getting work, but he's also kind of figure out though if he really wants this because like if he, if he you know because he sort of has a guilty conscience about what's happening here and this horrific stuff going on in the town and how bad things get and like it's it's just an intense movie it is so well acted and like the performances in here are all like I said are all amazing the music is great in here I can't get over how much I like this movie this movie was so good and like you know probably one of my favorite things I've watched in a while but it has on here though a featurette uh, making a featurette on here but highly recommend you guys check this out if you guys have watched this too let me know what you thought of it but I love that one so much the next one here is a movie uh, starring Liam Neeson called uh, Code Pursuit. It's from Lionsgate as well. This is the 4K Ultra HD edition, which includes the Blu-ray as well as the digital copy. The digital copy is also included, though, in Never Grow Old. But essentially, though, this one, though, is about, um, you know, uh, Liam Neeson's character, who's in this small town, and he... Um, is the snowplow driver. He like plows the snow and kind of cleans the streets and everything. And he's all and he's like become like um kind of like the guy in the town that everybody likes. And like he never could do a bad thing. He's kind of like the model citizen of the town. He like helps with things. If people have problems, he helps them. He helps like you know plow their lawn, their their driveways, and helps them around the town with all kind of things. And it's pretty much like the model citizen. But um basically something ends up happening to his son, and his son ends up getting uh, you know getting killed, and it deals with like something with drugs and him kind of something basically he 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 gets murdered and it makes it look like it dealt with something with the son was messing with drugs or something and Liam Neeson's character kind of is like thinking well my son did not have anything to do with drugs I knew my son and and you know he basically though is putting it in his hands to figure out exactly what had happened to his son and get revenge on the people that murdered his son and it's kind of him going after them in this insane revenge movie that has like a real throwback kind of vibe with, with the way it goes because it's like it is intense movie about him going and getting revenge on the people trying to track them all down and get to the bottom of the whole thing going on in the town and all these bad stuff that's happening in the town and it's kind of like you know this is happening these people are found dead and then like the police are like investigating and they're going by like oh yeah oh well, that's the model citizen and he you know he didn't know anything <laughs> but it, it was it was actually really really well done here and it's just and it also it's like a you know it has like serious aspects but then it has like some really like dark comedy aspects as well to some of the stuff that happens like some really really wacky kind of over the top things happen as well but it also is dealing with too this stuff with the um the local tribe and they're like um at war with some of the other people there so that it, he basically because of what Liam Neeson's character is doing he's causing all these other problems in the town and everything this has on here though a bunch of different features it has um deleted scenes on here interview on here with Liam Neeson interview on here with the director on this one as well as a behind the scenes featurette on here and as well as a theatrical trailer but 4k wise though this one looks great on 4k it's a movie that's mainly set like most of it's pretty much all of it set the snow outside in the snow so like it really really looks great in 4k like the big thing i always say with 4k you notice is the hdr which is the high dynamic range which is the contrast levels you end up seeing much more contrast levels to like the darkness and everything. Also, it's much much brighter picture all around. And like since it's in the snow and everything, it just gives us this really cool vibe in 4K. So if you guys have 4K, definitely worth uh, you know uh, the picking up the 4K version. The next one here is from Lionsgate as well, and it's a movie here called American Exit, which stars uh, Dane Cook. And this is the first movie I've seen Dane Cook in in a long time. I like Dane Cook as an actor. Like I liked um, Employee of the Month a lot. I always thought that was just a fun comedy. I also thought he was really good in the movie Mr. Brooks, which you don't hear about too often, but he did a really good job in that movie. This movie, though, is basically, though, about... He um he his character finds out that he's sick and like um he hasn't seen his son you know he finds out there's something sick that's going on with him and like his character though kind of buys artwork and kind of sells artwork to people and um he's like one of his clients is Udo Kier is probably one of his clients in the film but he ends up like getting in some kind of an argument with Udo Kier's character and then like doesn't want to take the money that he's because he doesn't want to pay him or something so he ends up like um stealing this one art piece and he ends up um. 
going on and he hasn't seen his son his character hasn't you know uh dane kirk's character hasn't seen his son in in a long time as well because you know he's kind of like lost touch and and he basically is trying to tell his wife you know he doesn't want to say that he's sick or anything but he's like i really would like to see my son and I mean, i'd like to do on this trip with him and see him again and basically what's going on though is since he's sick he wants to see his son and he's planning on like taking his son and like going on this like drive to mexico and kind of like spending a long time with his son but it ends up being because he stole this piece of art artwork from Udo Kier's character it ends up being like like problems and they're kind of coming after him and him and his son you know his son doesn't know what's going on at all he just knows he's seeing his father and like, he hasn't seen him in a long time so he's not really sure exactly what's happening here but so basically though about him finally seeing his father for the first time in a while but then there's all this other stuff going on and like um you know Dane Cook's character is like sick in certain parts and it's not he's not telling his son what's happening or what's going on with him or anything but this is actually a really pretty interesting movie here it has on here though uh, a car ride improv on here with Dane Cook as well as a trailer gallery. The next one here is from Lionsgate as well. It's a movie that stars um, Addison Timlin. Addison Tom Timlin. I believe, I'm always saying her name wrong though. I, I, I think Tomlin or Timlin. I think pretty sure it's Timlin. And it's called Lifelike. This is basically though kind of has the vibe of Ex Machima a little bit. Kind of like because it's about this, um, this, this, this couple who end up um, Basically, though, the one's father was really rich. You know, her Addison Tomlin's husband, you know, was is really rich. You know, his father was really rich and kind of was giving him money to kind of get by and everything, like an allowance and everything. But his father ended up dying, and he had this huge corporation with all this money. And you know, they kind of were before like together, living together in this small little you know uh, apartment, and they didn't have a whole lot. And but all of a sudden, though, when the one's father dies, they get all this money. They end up you know inheriting everything. And they end up moving into this mansion, and they and they, they have like um, maids there and everything. And her character, though, she doesn't understand like want to have maids there and all this help taking care of the property and everything, like mowing the lawn and and everything. And, and she's like uncomfortable with all this, so she fires all of them. But then, little like right afterwards, she's like, I can't handle this. I can't cut all this grass. I can't take care of everything. This property is enormous. It's a giant mansion. And um, you know, but basically, though, the company though that the that the husband works at, it's um you know, that he inherits. He finds out, though, that one of the people that was, like, one of the, the clients there created these cyborg robots. So they end up getting the cyborg robot, you know, that they, you know, she's not really sure about this, but you know, to kind of come and help at the house. And it's basically, though, about, you know, this cyborg coming to the house and he's, like, helping doing work and helping things. But there ends up being, like, a bunch of different things happening with the cyborg and things. And there's some really interesting, like, totally out there directions this movie goes, you know, and, and like, an interesting, like, way it all ends up and everything like uh, some really unexpected stuff in this movie this is actually pretty well done this has on here though behind the scenes on this one you know with uh cast and crew interviews and the next one i got here is from fox and this is a movie here called the prodigy and i will say this is probably one of the most original different movies i've seen in a really long time which really has some like different kind of stuff that happens and really really some shocking stuff as well and it was one of the most original out there horror movies i've seen you know in theaters in a really really long Long time essentially though it's about this couple that has this kid and the kid like you know starts out like um he's like super intelligent he's talking before he's one years old and he's like you know way ahead of all the other kids and you know when he goes to school though right when he gets to school all of a sudden like you know he starts to you know like i said he starts out super intelligent and like really ahead of the things he's doing and can figure all these kind of things out but all of a sudden though as he gets older and enters school he starts to like have these weird things happen to him where he's sort of sitting there and he sort of spaces out and kind of loses track of time and it's like something weird is happening Happening to him and it, it, the movie has like vibes of like something like um, Omen and like the bad seed because it, it goes in that direction where when he spaces out and forgets things things that are violent happen like very very violent things happen and he has no recollection of what had happened and how this happened and it's essentially though about his parents the kids parents trying to figure out what is happening to their kid and why this is happening and you know how this kid who had you know was so bright and had like was so ahead of you know the way he 
he, you know, other kids and so intelligent and talking so young, why he's having these things happen to him and this violent stuff. And like I said, the movie goes in these crazy directions, has some really, really shocking stuff happens in it. And it's like really, really like a super, super memorable movie. Like I like this movie so much. If you guys have seen the movie though, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of this one. This is one though I highly recommend you guys check out and pick up. I love this one so much. It has on here though a comedy track on here with the director as well as some featurettes and a gallery on this one. But like I said, definitely worth checking out. And the next one I got here is from Universal. It's a movie here called Fighting With My Family. This one has on here, though, the theatrical cut as well as the director's cut on here. But this is directed by Stephen Merchant. And this is uh, essentially, this is the uh, true story of WWE uh, wrestler Paige and how she got into the WWE. And there was a documentary on her and her family before she was known or in the WWE or anything. It was a couple years before. But it was a documentary on her family because her parents have this wrestling league in the UK and her and her brothers are all in it and like they like you know how do these wrestling matches and everything and it was essentially though bo both her and her brother though always really really wanted to get into the WWE they were always watching wrestling that was what they were all really into and this is all about though how she got into it and uh, you know and, and there was an audition that came into London and she went with her brother to audition and she ended up getting in at the tryouts, and then it was her coming to America, and, um, you know, uh, training with um, Vince Vaughn's character, playing the trainer, and he's like, you know, real kind of like, you know, real meticulous with his training, and he's like, you know, if you, know, if you can't do this, and if you want to tap out and leave and go home, go ahead, and he's like, he did a really good job in here, though, playing this, like, you know, real, like I said, meticulous trainer with all these kind of things that they're all going through and everything, but it's essentially, though, all about all the things that she went through, and then kind of the stuff that's going on as well, because, like, her brother didn't end up getting into the the stages of where she was you know got to America and everything he didn't end up getting picked so there's a lot of dramatic stuff going on at home with her brother and kind of her stuff with her family who is really rooting for her and, and they're like selling t-shirts and everything before she even knows if she's going to get picked and actually make it to the actual WWE and get past the tryout stages they're like selling t-shirts and stuff her father is played by um Nick Frost I just I thought this is a really really fun movie I thought the parents aspect her parents and everything in here was great and it was just a really really you know well put together movie I over you know all in all really like this movie a lot it has on here though a bunch of different uh, features also yeah The Rock is in here as well playing himself when they get to like some of the WWE scenes and stuff of her like getting further along in the tryouts and everything but this has on here though deleted and extended scenes it has a gag reel a making of on here also has a commentary track on here with the director Stephen Merchant so that's really cool that was included on here as well and the next one here is from uh, Warner Brothers. They sent her a free copy of this one to let you guys know that this one is available. And this is the Lego Movie 2, the second part. I will say I really love the first Lego movie. I thought that was a really, really fun movie. They made some other Lego films as well, like um, the Lego Batman movie, the Lego Ninjago movie. This film, though, this one is a direct follow-up to the, the first Lego movie, which I believe that came out in 2014. And this one is basically, though, about uh, Chris Pratt's character, you know, and he plays Emmett. And it's kind of like his character in the first movie was like always really smiling and happy and like everything is awesome and like everyone he's like really very happy about everything but and but though like the way the last movie ended up though things like fell apart and the town got all messed up and everything and this is you know takes place after the first one and the town now is kind of like Mad Max Fury Road. It's like a post-apocalyptic town. Like, everything's all, like, messed up. And it has, like, that post-apocalyptic, like I said, Mad Max kind of look. And the way everybody's dressed and everything. But yet, you know, Chris Pratt's character, you know, like I said, he plays Emmett. His character is still really smiley and happy. And, like, you know, everyone else is looking at him like, what are you talking about? Things are not great. Things are not, like, perfect anymore. But he's still like that. And then, though, like, it's, it's dealing with, though, you know, just as things you think couldn't get worse. It's dealing with, like, the these... Um, Duplos, you know, Legos from space that are coming and, you know, messing up the town as it is and causing even more problems. And then it's like, you know, about, uh, you know, Emmett's character trying to figure out what he's going to do and how he's going to stop this. And like I said, it's like all kind of problems happening. It's a really, really fun movie. The thing that's fun about these movies, though, is they have like um, jokes in here for like kids and then they have jokes in here for adults as well. So it's a really good mix between them. And also they have a lot of pop culture kind of jokes and pop culture references and some of the characters you you see and some like old school Lego characters you see in the background and stuff like that. There's just really, really fun movies. 4K wise though, this one looks great on 4K. You know, I always feel like animation, you know, and animated films always look really, really good 4K wise. 
this one definitely, you know, looks amazing 4K. Because, like, I feel like the big thing I've said in the past with 4K is it's all about, like, the, the contrast levels and the brightness levels, and it really just boosts the picture all around. So if you guys have 4K capacities, though, this is one I would definitely recommend, you know, watching in 4K. This has on here, though, a bunch of different features. It has deleted scenes. It has a feature ad on here, making a feature ad. It has music video and a bunch of other things as well on this one. And it also includes the 4K, the Blu-ray, and a digital copy. Uh, the next one here is from Paramount, and this is the uh, complete complete second season here of 13 Reasons Why. And the 13 Reasons Why the first season, I love that, you know, show so much. I will say though, it was like one of the saddest shows I ever seen in my life. Like I can't think of anything else that I had watched where I cried more than I did to that show and like what ends up happening and like I got so invested in the first season of the show. It's one of those shows, though, where it kind of, I felt like it, it was it had a resolution and was kind of left open-ended, you know, in, in a way, too. But I feel like there was a big resolution to it because it was about the one character, you know, who, um, you know, Hannah, who ended up, you know, committing suicide. And she left these tapes, you know, cassette tapes of kind of like the reasons why, 13 reasons why on these tapes. And the characters in there all had like a reason why and what they had in the, in, in the play of why this had happened to her. And like I said, it was a very emotional show. This one, though is dealing with kind of the resolution of what had happened in the last season and like dealing with um kind of the 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 consequences of everyone finding out about the tapes and how they kind of played into things and where people didn't do things that they should have done and that kind of stuff. It's hard to say too much about it without like giving away too much of what goes on. But like I, like I said, it's one of those shows where I feel like it didn't totally need another season. I think it's going to have a third season as well. But it still it did add more to this to what was going on and more about finding because you do find out other things as well. But like I said though, it's a very very sad show. It deals with a lot of really sad topics and everything on here. Year, but still a very well done show and if you guys have not seen them definitely is one I would say is worth watching and the next one I got here is from Epic Pictures and this is from their Dread Presents line it's a movie here called Red Con 1 this is basically though about this zombie outbreak which has happened and it's, and it's contained to this one specific area and they have like stuff to kind of keeping it enclosed and everything and it was it kind of happened with like this um in somebody in prison bit somebody and then it spread around and it became this whole big thing but like I said it's contained to one one area but it, you know it's gotten to the point though where even though it's contained if it continues on and continues to spread in this area it will get to the point where it will get out and it will spread around everywhere and become something that will no way will be able to be cured or anything so these soldiers are being sent into the area to have to they have to basically get this one person who can they believe help and help actually cure this and figure out what they're going to do and that's like kind of like the only hope if like if they can't get to this person then it's going to become a huge nightmare and like I said it's just going to continuously get worse and worse and the zombies in here are not like the slow kind of zombies that are like walking really slow or anything these are more like the 28 days later like infected zombies and like you know the fast zombies that are running real fast and like super crazy and they have like more so, sort of more intelligence and like stuff like that to what the way that they're acting and everything so it's like this nightmare of a situation of them going into this area and having all sorts of problems and everything but like a really really crazy you know, uh, fast paced zombie film here. But this has on here, though, feature wise, has an interview on here with um, Kevin Eastman. It has a behind the scenes featurette, uh, cast and crew, uh, interviews on here, uh, festival videos, trailers as well on this one. And this one here is from Wellgo USA. And it's a movie here which is kind of billed as the expendables of the martial arts world. It's a movie here called Triple Threat. This is basically, though, about this guy who is planning on taking down this whole crime syndicate group. And like, there is a hit that's put on his daughter because of this and like it's essentially about these guys trying to take out the daughter and then like and they're the, the bad guys and they're basically played by like um scott atkins who's in lots and lots of martial arts and action films uh, My, you know michael j white you know who was in spawn he was recently in dragged across concrete and then it's about the um them basically trying to take you know down the, the, this daughter and you know the hit on the daughter and then it's about these mercenaries who are trying to stop them from the whole thing happening so it's a really fun crazy uh action film here like i said it's got the they bill it as the expendables of the martial arts world so it's a lot of other like known martial art actors as well in this one this one has on here though feature wise it has interviews with the cast as well as trailers on this one the next one here is from movie zing and this is a uh, from a sony release and it's a movie here starring william defoe and mickey rourke called white sands this is a movie i had never seen before and it was actually a pretty interesting movie though about william defoe playing this cop and out in the desert, it's kind of like the, sort of, I'm pretty sure it was like the desert kind of area. I think it was like, 
feel like it was... A, I can't remember exactly where that was exactly set for sure, though, but he, he ends up finding this... Um, there's this body found out in the middle of the desert kind of area. And um, the body out there, though, they find this briefcase with all this money in it. And the other cops are like, well, we don't need to. You know, E.M. at Walsh, Walsh, he's in here playing one of the cops. And he's like, oh, we, we can just leave off the fact that this money was out here. And we don't have to say anything about this. And, you know, William Defoe's character is like, no, no. And he wants to kind of figure out exactly who was this guy out there and exactly what had happened and why there was this money. And he's like kind of digging and looking into the clues and he kind of finds this phone number, makes this call, and then he ends up, you know, at this hotel. And he essentially ends up getting linked up with Mickey Rourke and he kind of finds out because he brings the money and he finds out exactly what's going on here. And it's one of these movies where you don't know who you can trust because it's like um, a certain characters kind of come around and you think you know who these characters might be but then you see other characters and they're like they're saying the same thing and it's like it's a really interesting kind of movie like um, just with all these kind of things where you don't know who you can trust and kind of like a um, like I said a you know mystery film about who you know was behind this murder and like what exactly was the big reason for this money and what was all going on but a really pretty interesting movie always love though William Dafoe William Dafoe is always so good in everything though and the next ones here are all from Mill Creek and this is a brand new Blu-ray DVD combo release of Anaconda, which stars um, Jennifer Lopez, Ice Cube, John Voight, and Eric Stoltz. This is also, I think it was the first like mainstream big film that Owen Wilson was in, I believe. So I think he did Bottle Rocket like right before this, but I think this was like the first like big like Hollywood film that he did. I might be wrong about that. At least that's the first one I remember seeing him in. This is essentially though about um this crew who are doing this documentary and um, they go out to the air, you know, to uh, the jungle and um, they end up coming across John Voight's character and kind of help him because he's in his boat and something had happened to him. And like, he's like kind of like an expert kind of know-it-all like with snakes. And he's like, I can guide you and I can get you these, this certain area. But he's like giving them wrong information and ends up, because he has his ulterior motives of what he's doing and what he's up to and everything. And essentially though, they end up like with this gigantic, huge anaconda snake who is like kind of on on the trail with them and kind of coming after them and they're getting like some of the characters are getting eaten by the snake and it is a it's a really fun movie this is one of those movies i remember seeing this movie in theaters when this first came out and i remember how much i absolutely love this movie i've always been a fan as well though of jennifer lopez so i pretty much watched most of the movies that she's been in and i don't know i always loved her in this movie this is one of these movies i've watched this movie so many times throughout the years just a really really fun movie they made a bunch of different sequels as well but i feel like the first one was always the best movie the next one here is from mill creek as well and this is uh, Ghost of Mars, which is directed by John Carpenter. Uh, Ice Cube stars in this movie as well, Natasha Hendricks. Um, and also in here was uh, Cleo Duvall, Pam Greer, uh, Jason, uh, uh, Jason Statham, which I think this is one of Jason Statham's first movies as well, I believe, or at least the first thing I remember seeing him in. But this is a John Carpenter movie that you don't hear about too often. And I always thought this was a really fun movie because it's all set on Mars and it's about Natasha Hendricks' character going to get uh, Ice Cube's character. He's like, he's this bad guy in the movie. And like basically, though, there ends up being these like weird, like kind of crazy mutants that are kind of like... Um, night breed kind of um kind of sort of like weird kind of creatures out there that are kind of crazy and they end up finding themselves trapped out there in the prison place where they are and like um these kind of ones are trying to kind of come after them and they're doing some insane stuff it is a crazy movie i always like i said i always liked this movie uh john carver did the music in this movie just a fun movie that um it doesn't really get talked about much and really is one is worth checking out it has on here though feature wise a commentary track on here with the director and natasha Hendricks, a video diary on here some featurette special effects uh, demonstrations on this on this one, you know, special effects showing how they did the effects and everything. The next one here is from Mill Creek as well, and it's called um, Eyes of Laura Mars. And this is a movie that um, John Carpenter was one of the writers of this movie. It stars Faye Dunaway and Tommy Lee Jones. This is basically a lot Faye Dunaway's character, who is this photographer who takes kind of out there photos that kind of have some controversy around them that some that people are some people are kind of offended by kind of the subject matter and everything. But she all of a sudden starts getting these like weird like headaches and like these flash and, and flash like visions of people like some people getting murdered and things like that. And she starts like seeing all these kind of things happening. And it's essentially about her trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Because, like, um, you know, she's, like, thinking, how is she seeing these things? And someone was killed, you know, in this one building, and she saw it happen right before she got there. And she's telling the cops, and the cops are like, well, where were you? How did you see this? And she's like, oh, I, I saw it, but I was 
block, couple blocks away, and they're like, what? And they're, and they're just kind of not taking her seriously, but she's like getting these visions and seeing things. There's really great scenes of her like putting together some of her photo pieces and stuff in this. But like I said, it has a John Carpenter kind of vibe to it, but he didn't direct this one. Like I said, this was a really early, this is from 78 though, but he was like, well, the writer on this one the next one here is from Mill Creek, and it's a complete series set here, which includes all 143 episodes. And this is uh, The Adventures of Robin Hood, the complete series here. And this is a um, this ran from 1955 to 1960. This I never was really familiar with this particular series because if you guys don't know the character of Robin Hood, he was the character who you know um, gave from you know he you know stole from the rich and gave to the poor, and he was kind of like a hero who was kind of like going after like the bad guys and kind of helping people and everything, and. Um, um, he also was somebody that kind of came from money, but then like his cash was taken away from him and he had all sorts of problems and everything. I, when I think of Robin Hood, though, I always think of the, you know, the movie, um, you know, uh, Kevin, the Kevin Costner film. And like, I, I always remember watching that movie a lot as a kid. And then, you know, they did the parody movie, uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights. But this is just a really fun series. If you guys are a fan of, of the, you know, Robin Hood, and if you guys want to, like I said, there's a whole lot of episodes on here, 143 episodes. And it ran for four seasons here. And here's a little look though at the discs in here like i said just want to let you guys know that this one was available from uh, mill creek and a complete series uh dvd set another here. one here i have is a complete series this is from uh, via vision this is an australian company um and this is um a show that I, I remembered hearing about this show when it was on, but I had never actually saw it until now. And it was a pretty interesting show. Now, this one, though, like I said, is from ViaVision, and this one is a region-free release, so you guys can watch this one no problem in the U.S. You don't have to have, like, an all-region uh, DVD or Blu-ray player. You can just watch this one on any standard American uh, uh, DVD or Blu-ray player. So, like I said, you don't have to have anything specific to watch this. And this is the complete series here of the show uh, Leverage, and this one ran for five seasons here. And this is... um. You know, basically though, it stars Timothy Hutton, and he's like, um, what was his character? He was like an, an insurance and, um, investigator, and but he ended up like sort of changing what he was doing because of things that happened to him, and he ends up like going and forming this team that works with him, and basically, you know, all the episodes are each one is about him kind of helping somebody that needs help, where like um, a corporation like um, didn't pay them, or a corporation went and stole one of their ideas, like their designs, and like he needs to go in there and figure out how they're going to infiltrate the company and get the designs back. And um, it, that's kind of what it is, is him sort of going in and with his team, like into these high level situations where it like, they're dealing with all kinds of, um, all kinds of like, um, really like tough situations to get into but this team is like super able to get into these things and kind of crack the passwords and all these kind of um uh government type things and well, that's that's essentially what it is is like him trying to basically help these people and you know try and get the money that they're owed or, you know if something had happened to somebody and like the company is refusing to pay them and they can't because they can't get the evidence about it so they're trying to go in there and trying to get the evidence to try to be in the favor of the person that kind of stuff here like I said though this has the complete uh, series here so it has and I'll show you guys a look at the discs and everything so the first one here is uh, season one here and they have a bunch of different features I'll show you I'll tell you some of those ones as well season two and then season three uh, season four and season five but feature wise though there's a bunch of different features like season one has um, some uh, uh, deleted scenes on here um, and then it has on here some making of things on here like anatomy of a stunt scene it has a leverage Q&A here on season 2 commentary tracks on here a gag reel um, on, th on the third season here it has like some on set videos behind the scenes gag reels commentary tracks deleted scenes so lots and lots of features on here so if you guys are fans of these ones like I said I want to let you guys know that this one is available from uh, Via Vision in a complete series set here and actually like I said a really interesting show so I'd never seen before kind of has the vibe a little bit to that show Scorpion which came a couple years after a few years after this show though aired on um, TNT in the US next one here is a uh, this is also uh, from via vision this is a region free blu-ray so you guys can watch this one as well in the US you don't have to have any specific uh, all region player or anything like that this will play in a standard uh, US blu-ray player and this is uh, the film that stars Lou Diamond Phillips and this was the first film that he was ever in called La Bamba 
It's basically though about his character playing uh, Richie, uh, Richie Valens, and it's about his. You know, it's kind of all about how he kind of came into the scene, and it's about how like he he's you know he came from not a lot of money, and kind of how he um, kind of grew to his, his success, and kind of you know basically because he died at a really young age as well, and it's kind of all the stuff stuff that he went through. It's a really really well done biopic. I've watched this movie a couple of times throughout the years, and just a really really well done biopic. Lou Diamond Phillips did a really great job in this movie. And you can really see, too, how, like, after this came out, he's, like, burst from the scene and ended up getting in lots of different movies after this one. But it has on here, though, a commentary track on here with the uh, director, executive producer, and cast. It also has a commentary track on here with the producers. It has a uh, Remembering uh, Richie featurette on here, uh, La, La Bamba music video, original theatrical trailer, uh, Lonely Teardrops music video on this one as well. Like I said, this is a region-free release. You guys can watch this one no problem in the U.S., the next ones here are all from uh, MVD, and this one here is from the MVD uh, uh, Rewind Collection. I always love the look of these ones because they, they are done old school style to look like an old school video rental. This one here is called uh, Boogie Boy, and this um, has on here though like um, like the name of like a, a rental place and like the phone number. It has like special collector's edition Blu-ray and DVD, 50% charge if this tape is not rewound. And I remember that like in the video stores when I was going as a kid and stuff like that, they always had that. Like if you didn't rewind the tape they actually would charge you so I remember like um it was never good to rewind with your VCR. So you had to buy, like, because it could break the VCR if you did it too often. So you had to buy, like, rewinders. So I remember I had, like, like two or three rewinders because I used to always rent stuff and was buying tapes all the time and everything. So I had all these rewinders because, like, the rewinders would break, too. Like, they were, like, only, like, $20. So they, you would just basically all they were was to rewind the tapes. But this is, like I said, what called a Boogie Boy. But this is basically about a guy who gets out of prison and is planning on changing his life and, you know, changing his ways and everything. But then, like, these guys that he knew came came from him wanting to do this job and like the thing doesn't go well and these people are coming after him it becomes a whole big thing this one has on here though a brand new uh, director approved 4k uh, high definition transfer from the original camera negative on this one as well as it has a uh, the making of uh, boogie boy on this one which is a 92 minute documentary uh, it has its feature length uh, uh, retrospective on the film with interviews and the stars on this one as well as a photo gallery and a theatrical trailer and it also has in here which is cool they have with the um the rewind collection they include mini posters so it has a mini poster as well in this one the next ones here are from uh, mvd as well and these are from the uh, marquee collection this is a um lesser talked about toby hooper film called mortuary i always really like this movie it's about this family that moves into this old abandoned mortuary and like the, the place they didn't know it when they get there they'd had like a history of like weird things that had happened there in the past and there's like somebody like living in the in the basement of the place in a weird part of the, of the mortuary and like people that come around there like weird things are happening to them and like a uh, bug hall was in this movie i always remember him in this movie this is uh, just a really fun uh toby hooper movie that you never really hear about too much another toby hooper movie that i always liked that is a really seldom one was like i think it was called like the apartment complex or something i don't think that one ever got a, a blurry release or a dvd release or anything but this has on here though a commentary track on here with toby hooper it has a behind the scenes featurette on here with toby hooper as well as a the theatrical trailer the next one here is from the uh, Marquee Collection as well, the MVD Marquee Collection as well. A movie starring Artie Lang called Beer League. It has Artie Lang and Ralph Macchio. And this is another really fun movie about um, this uh, league of uh, baseball players. And they, they basically, they're going to get kicked off because they're, they cause all sorts of problems and everything. And they're like drinking and everything. And uh, Artie Lang is trying to like kind of help them all to, like, sort of wake up and get it together so they don't end up getting kicked out of the league and everything. And it's just a really fun, wacky movie. I always really liked this one as well. I always liked Artie Lang in films and stuff. Like, I liked him in Dirty Work and some of the other things that he was in. And of course, you know, he was on Howard Stern Show as well for years. This has lots of different features on here. It has, like, Beer Gogger short film, has a behind-the-scenes featurette, a Live from Cine Vegas featurette, Artie Lang, Lang behind the scenes of Jimmy Kimmel Live, and the Best Damn Sports Show, in the studio with Artie Lang, uh, Raw Interviews, Photo Gallery, a Theatrical Trailer. And this one here is from the Marquee Collection as well. This is a um, Robin Williams movie here called The Big White. 
It's another one that I had not seen in a long time and I always liked this one as well. And this is basically about Ron Williams' character. He's like having financial problems and everything and he ends up coming across this body and he's planning on trying to like claim the, the body as his brother to try and like collect money and get money from the whole thing and it becomes this whole big problem because like the people who like were responsible for killing this person are kind of coming after it looking for the body as well and he ends up in all sorts of problems and everything. This has on here though, uh, you know, um, uh, Holly Hunter stars in this movie as well well as uh, Woody Harrelson, Tim Blake Nielsen, Alison Lohman, uh, G Giovanni Rabisi, a really good cast. This has on here though a behind uh, the scenes featurette, photo gallery, and a theatrical trailer. And the next one I got here is from Cleopatra Entertainment. This is a movie here called Kiss Kiss. This is a movie about the, a group of these uh, exotic dancers and one of the girls uh, gets a tip from one of the clients. It was a $500 gift card to go to this wine vineyard where they, it's like wine tasting. They have like an animal sanctuary and that kind of stuff and the girls all go together to you know spend the the, the gift card and when they go there though the guy there who they give it to who works there is like acting like it's not real and stuff he's really messing around with them and everything but he's like oh no no it's real and you know, I'll, I'll give you girls a great time here we'll walk around you know tr have all kinds of different wines we'll look at all the animals and everything but this guy is actually planning this weird thing where he's like has this serum that he's working on which he believes that can control people and make them like become these great fighters and cannot bring out their in like insane fighting abilities that they don't know that they have and essentially though there's this one woman there who's like why Watching this to see if this thing actually works and it's basically these girls going into this female fight ring where they're going like and battling off these other girls and it's like these crazy fights and it's like like I said they're being mind controlled by this stuff and these insane fights and stuff and they you know it's sort of essentially though what's going on and like what they're going to do and how they're going to get out of this situation but actually a really pretty cool movie here this has on here though uh, behind the scenes uh, deleted scenes a uh, cast and crew uh, commentary track on this one as well the next one here is from um, Scream Team releasing it's a movie called uh, Cherokee Creek I love the cover on this one. It's basically though about these guys. It starts off as like these guys that are like kidnapping this one guy and you're kind of wondering what's happening and it's like this crazy kidnapping scene. It's like really wacky, ridiculous stuff. And um Basically, though, really early on, the very beginning, you find out, though, that they kidnapped their friend because they were having this bachelor party out in the woods, and, like, his wife, you know, his soon-to-be wife was all in on it and everything. And the one actor in here, uh, Billy Blair, who's been in a lot of different movies, he plays, like, um, villains and stuff like that. He stars in this movie. He did a really good job in this film, but he's been in, like, movies as villains and lots and lots of stuff. Like, he does a lot of character work throughout the years, but he was, like, one of the stars of this movie. And, he, like I said, I really loved his character in this. But essentially, though, there out there in the woods and his character though plays like an actor you know who's like been in a lot of like you know sort of cheesy uh, horror movies and stuff so like one of the guys who's out there for the bachelor party is like a fan of his and there's this funny scene of him like wanting to get an autograph and he just signs this like strange line on it and he wants to get a picture with him and he's charging him for the pictures and there's this really funny ridiculous stuff but essentially though out there in these woods there is a Bigfoot and it's kind of like there's all this wacky stuff happening but yeah it's ba the basis of Bigfoot's out in there kind of coming after them and it's like a comedy horror movie, though, so there's like some really wacky, like over the top scenes and stuff in this one. But I really like this one. This has on here, though, a commentary track on here. It has a behind the scenes, deleted scenes, production stills, uh, uh, trailers, Sasquatch music videos, commercials, bloopers, lots of different stuff. It even has like an, uh, like an intro to the movie as well. And the next one here is from uh, PBS, and this is uh, Finding Your Roots, the complete fifth season here. And this is basically, though, taking like uh, celebrities, public figures, um, known people, and going and looking into the their past in each of the episodes as certain people like it has like Cal Penn it has George R.R. R. Martin you know who's the creator of uh, Game of Thrones uh, you know um, it has uh, Tig Notaro and it's basically though like I said going and looking into their past family tree and looking into kind of like people that they may have known, known nothing about like um, their family you know great 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 grandmothers uh people in their past who it was like a high level figure uh people that could have been like come from they could have had like a royal some had royalty in their past people that may have gone missing mysterious kind of things in their past all that kind of stuff that they knew nothing about and kind of going and looking through all the thing and exploring it and kind of talking to them about it it's actually a really really interesting series here and this has like i said the complete fifth season here and it's 10 episodes on uh three discs and the last one here is from uh, PBS, and this is a BBC uh, 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 miniseries called uh, Less Mis... Less Miz. I don't ever know how you say this right. I'm pretty sure it's Less Miserables. I'm pretty sure, but I may be saying that 100% wrong. But this was always known as being done, at least that's how I always knew it, as a musical. 
As the, there was a film from a couple of years back, you know, sort of Anne Hathaway, which I really liked. It was a really good musical. Well, this is the, that story done now, though, but not as a musical. So it's done like as a, a just, it's basically, though, still a heavy drama because there's some really sad stuff going on in this story. But instead of like breaking into song like the, like the movies did in the past, it doesn't, or, you know, the musical version or anything, it didn't do that at all. It was all done just straight, serious, you know, dramatic and everything. And it was definitely interesting to see it in a different take though this stars um dominic west uh you know david oyelowo uh lily collins uh you know olivia coleman who recently starred in the favorite oh, she's you know did a great job in this always a fan too of uh, lily collins this has on here though some um featurettes on here uh, and some behind the scenes stuff on here but this is actually a pretty interesting different like i said very different take on the less Miz uh you know uh, story but anyway though guys that's all for the review portion of this video thanks again for watching subscribing i'll see you guys later